On the phone, we have legendary LPGA golfer, Louise Suggs. She won 58 LPGA tournaments, 60 professional wins. She won the Western Open four times. The Kraft Nabisco, I mean the LPGA Championship one time, the U.S. Open twice. She's in the World Golf Hall of Fame, and she was one of the founders of the LPGA Tour. How you doing, Miss Suggs? I'm pretty good. All things are, I'm, I'm missing most of the heat that everybody's having out in that neck of the woods. Fortunately, I'm in Sea Island, Georgia, right now, and uh, in the, have a nice ocean breeze, and the sun's out, and it's supposed to be nice today and tomorrow. I see that uh, you started golfing uh, when you were very young. What in your early teens? Yeah, uh, I was about ten. My father owned a public golf course, an old golf course outside of Atlanta, and uh, you, know, you know, nothing to do in a small town area. And so I just picked up the golf club and started swinging it, and that's about the extent of it, really. For several years, anyway. Well, you know, a lot of people can pick up a golf club, but not everybody knows what to do with it. Uh, well, did you have instruction, or did you just observation? Well, observation a lot, but then I uh, put my hands on the club correctly and, and just said, now, uh, this don't turn loose, stay steady, keep your head still, and swing around yourself. And that was about the way I started. And, and of course, then I grew taller, and, and uh, your swing does grow with you more or less. But you have to tweak it occasionally. And, and I had I, I, my idol was Bobby Jones, and being from Atlanta and born there and whatnot, it, it just it was perfect to watch him. And believe me, watching him was worth the price of admission, so to speak. I didn't know how lucky I was. Did you ever get a chance to meet Bobby Jones? Yes, I played with him several times. In fact, I played several exhibitions with him. And uh, the uh, the last formal exhibition that he played, I played with him in 1948 in Highlands, North Carolina. Did you beat him or did he beat you? <laughs> but let's just say we had a good time. <laughs> <laughs> no, what did he like what was he like? He, he was a personification of a perfect Southern gentleman. Nice man, nice guy, nice family. His children were my ages. And uh, so, and I knew his family and, and his wife's family and so forth and so on. So, it was uh, anybody in Atlanta, everybody knew Bobby Jones. When you won the Georgia State Amateur at 16 years old, did you feel after you won that that you could become a professional golfer? No. In those days, there was no such thing as women's professional golf. And uh, I just played because I liked to play, and I liked competition. And so, uh, I don't know, I mean... You just do things at the time you don't realize why you're doing them. There's no specific reason. I just play golf, and one day a lady stopped by the golf course and played and said, came in the clubhouse and said, who's that kid out there hitting balls? And Dad said, it's my daughter. He said, she said to him, this Georgia State is in a couple of months in Atlanta. Why don't you see if she can enter it? Which he did. I was 14 at the time, and I was the last one in the championship flight, but uh, <laughs> needless to say, I got my come up and right away. At what point did you say to yourself, you know, there ought to be a professional women's tour? At what point did you say? What? At what point did you say to yourself, you know, there ought to be a women's professional tour? Well, uh, after I won the British, I, I became a professional then in 1948 and uh, with McGregor Golf Company. And uh, we, several of the companies at that point had other girls that were, had been 
had become professionals and they were going around different places and giving exhibitions and clinics and uh, you know, talked about their products and we kept running into one another and we finally said, well, why don't we see if we can't get somebody to put up a little money for us to play for and that's how it started and it started we started talking about it in 1949 and in 1950 it was incorporated. I see that two of the other founders were two of your competitors in Patty Berg and Babe Zaharis. How was that's it correct. How was yes. it how was it competing against them too? How was what? Were they very difficult to compete against, or did you have more trouble with one than the other? <laughs> well, everybody's difficult to compete against, and you just kept your own, uh, whatever you want to say. You, you, you live by your own rules, and, and I, I played them as professionals, and uh, they were my two biggest competitors, you might say, and, and there were only 13 of us originally, so now I don't know what it is. Hundreds. So you know, everybody, everybody knew everybody else fairly well, I will take it then. Well, On the, everybody, what? Everybody, all, all the women golfers on the pro tour knew one another pretty well then. Yeah, well, we all had to live together and be together and travel together, and, and it took, I know I always succeeded, to tell you the truth, we did it in spite of ourselves, but it worked out perfectly, and like, we actually started a new industry for women, and nobody has ever picked up on that, but it's unusual when you think about it, there was no such thing as women's pro golf until 1950. No. Nope. We started it. <laughs> exactly, because, I mean, women's professional sports, you had baseball, and you had basically tennis. Yeah. And they both were with Wilson Company. And anyway, uh, it, it took some doing. And uh, as I say, you, can you imagine women going into the CEO's office and asking them to give a golf tournament in 1950? That was not an easy experience, believe me. So the golfers, you had to actually go there and try to convince companies to sponsor events? Um, we didn't try to get the companies to sponsor anybody specifically. No, I mean, the kids made their own arrangements. And, and uh, But the companies did help us with tournaments. Now, was being president of the organization a distraction from your golf? How, how were you able to handle that? Just did the best you could. And we didn't have anybody to help us, and we worked out of the trunks of our cars. And, and uh, um, you know, we played where we could find somebody that would put up some money. That's about the extent of it. It took a while. Um, a couple of places, uh, people went ran off with what money we did collect to play for, so we didn't get paid. Was it, were all the golfers pretty close, being that you guys were in close proximity? Like, when you weren't competing against each other in the course, would you go out to dinner with each other or the families? Oh, yeah. Yeah, and some some of the families did travel with the kids. And uh, it, was, uh, it was an interesting experience, believe me. We drove everywhere, and of course, there were two-lane roads in those days, and no such things as motels. You see, the state would... Uh, members or friends or in downtown hotels. But it was interesting. Now, when you tried to get money for tournaments and sponsorships and things like that, did some of the people still think you were crazy? <laughs> did they think we were crazy? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you bet you they did. <laughs> and uh, it was an uh, interesting conversation sometimes, believe me. I was reading about you last night, and I see that uh, you kind of pissed off Sam Sneed after playing golf against him in a tournament. That I did what? That you, Sam Sneed was not too happy when you beat him in a tournament. Well, I mean, anybody doesn't like to lose, but you do the best you can, and I did the best I could do, and that was all there was to it. Um, 
What was he like? What was what like? What was Sam Snead like? <laughs> uh, he was a, a macho man that didn't think much of women professional golfers. <laughs> Was that the general reaction among male golfers to the women's tour? I, it depended on the person. And generally speaking, the men were helpful. And so there are only one or two maybe that would uh, express their opinion that we didn't have any place in golf. But, I mean, like you said about Bobby Jones, I mean, he, not only was he a golfer, he was an attorney, he was a astute businessman. It seemed like he did things the right way. He did, and he helped us tremendously. I, uh, the PGA was having a meeting at, at uh, the Masters Tournament one year, and I asked him for some tickets for Marilyn Smith and Marlena Falk and myself. And he said, how many do you want? Uh, he, he gave me a bunch, so at any rate. He, he was. He knew what was going on. He was behind it. He didn't. He didn't have anything to do with it, though, except to encourage me to stay with it. What was Babe Zaharias like on the course and off? Uh, I would like not to get into that. <laughs> she was a good character unto herself. Put it that way. She wanted to win, and that was the main thing. Did you ever get a chance to play uh, Augusta? Oh yeah, several times. Because what they Many don't allow, times. do they allow women members now? Because I know for the longest time they didn't. Well, they allow women members now, but I mean they've always ladies have always been allowed to play the golf course and and uh, use the clubhouse and so forth and so on. Their husbands and and they could bring guests. Their husbands could bring guests and so forth. So it it's been. Uh, uh, nice all around uh, situation. It's just, just some people get overly enthusiastic about trying to do things that they have no business trying to do sometimes. So it's a private club and they can do as they please. What do you think of the LPGA today? Well, it certainly has expanded and what have you. The girls are making a living, and, and that's more than we did. If we hadn't had other jobs, we never could have made it. What was your other job besides playing golf? Uh, McGregor Golf Company. So you were a sponsor? <laughs> well, I was a staff member, and uh, the rest of the, there were about, well, everybody else had a, had a sponsor, so to speak. Because, let's see, McGregor had you, and the other big golfer they had was Jack Nicklaus, I know, for a number of years. Yeah, well, they had quite a few people. Byron Nelson, Ben Hogan, and uh, I'm trying to think of some of the people in the early days. Their names probably wouldn't mean too much to you. but And then uh, Wilson had uh, Patty and Babe and Helen Bentwiler and, and uh, oh, Opal Hill. Spalding had uh, Marilyn Smith, and uh, Golfcraft had Shirley Spork. So everybody had some body helping them. Thank you so much for your time. It was a pleasure talking to you. You too, and I appreciate it very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Do well. Bye. Thank you. Bye.